Hello, in this video we'll be looking at the new camera software that we've got with the Chromebook. It's been out for a few months now, it has improved to an extent but there's still some limitations to using it and we'll look at that in the video coming up. So as you'll notice I'm actually in the camera software here so it's a bit of a strange one because I, I, I can see myself um, right in front of myself which is quite bizarre so forgive me if this video is a bit over the place but it, it's quite strange recording camera software at the same time so this is the camera software that you get with your Chromebook now one thing I will let you know obviously when I close the software then obviously I will disappear there's a problem with the video it will just be going in and out so I can show you different parts of the actual camera software this camera software previously would only let you, let you take photos, for example, but in the last few months, it's got video. There has been improvements, and I'll show you them improvements, but there's still some things that are missing as far as I'm concerned. I would love to get to the day where I can do all of my YouTube videos on a Chromebook, but I can't do everything on the Chromebook. At the moment, I have to use a PC for video editing certain things, but um, and I don't know if that will ever change. It may change. I think it will change in the future. But things like just recording and me wanting to be on the video, I would love to be able to use my webcam, what I've got in front of me, like I have now, um, to do those videos. But the problem is there's there's limitations to why I can't do that. So we'll we'll look at all that now. So first of all, I will close it down. And then I'm going to show you how you get into it. So if you go to your start menu down here, and then this is the new menu. If you haven't got this menu, you'd like it. I've links, put a link in the description below so you can see how to add this new menu. And from here, you just want to click on camera there. And then it brings it up here. Now, as you can see, it's different to how it was earlier. Um, this wouldn't be no good for me at all because you can see a white wall here, you can see a bit of a light here, you can see image, you, you know, it's just, you can see pretty bad paintwork down here as well where my painting's not the best. So that wouldn't work, but luckily I can fix that. So I'll show you all of that. So first of all, let's have a look at the options you've got. You've got scan. I've done a video on scan. Not the best, if I'm being honest. I'd avoid it, avoid it for now. Square is quite good. What Square does, it narrows the actual space that it's looking at. This is only for taking pictures, though. It would have been good if this was for video as well, but that you can do that. So, if, for example, you had your camera in front of you and you wanted to take a photo, and you went to take a photo like that, and you had like me things in the background that you didn't want and you didn't want to have to crop it afterwards, just go to square and then you can simply take a picture of that by clicking that there and that will take a picture. Just show you here, pictures go into your camera there. So just go to your files, camera, and you'll see that picture. This picture doesn't come out very good for me, as you can see, but that's because I've got a lot of lights in the room, but if you're just doing it as normal, it should be fine. It's really overexposed, that picture. So that square option is quite good. And then you've got the standard photo option, which uses up all of the actual, what the camera is capable of, the way how widescreen it is, for example. And that again, takes a photo. Now, if you wanted to take a photo, but you didn't want it to take it straight away, here, you'll see there's a timer there you get to there by the settings up here and up here you'll see time and duration and there's three seconds or ten seconds so I'll leave it on three seconds go back one go back one again and down here you can see there's a three and a timer next to it so if I hit photo it won't take the photo for three seconds so it's going to take it around now there we go so that's took that photo then. So that gives you time to obviously get into position or whatever. And as I said, you can change that to 10 if you want to, just by changing that to 10 seconds. 10 seconds is a bit long, but it's great that it's there. I use, I do use 10 seconds on my phone camera if I want to take a picture, which I want to use on a YouTube thumbnail, for example. So it is useful. Um, in relation to um, the timer, if you don't want to use the timer, just click there 
and then it will take the picture straight away. So that's it, the picture's just taken. It's paused, it's paused me a bit. There we go, we come back. So it's taken that picture straight away. And if we have a look, here they are. Like I said, don't take too much notice of the overexposure. That's because there's lights in the room. Um, but there's the pictures there. Okay, so here as well, what you've got here, there, this will turn it over like that. And that's quite useful, that is quite handy. So instead of over there, you can do it over there if you want to, for whatever reason. Here, you've got grid lines, and the grid lines is just to help you get centered. These grid lines won't show up in any video or photo that you take. They're just there to help you get centered. So there are all the settings here. If we go up here, the settings, you've got the grid type. That's the standard, the 4x4 four four there, golden ratio. I don't know what golden ratio means. I, I, I haven't even looked, I don't think it really matters. It's just grid lines either way. So there's your grid types there. You've got the time of duration that we've looked at and you've got the camera resolution. So if you go into the camera resolution, you'll see here photo resolution is three megapixel. That's not that great. That's why it would possibly be overexposed. Let's see what else. It will give you all the options that your camera is capable of. So 16.9, three megapixel looks like the best. Or you can go down to real low quality here, for example. So you do have a lot of different options. This also changes, you'll see that's changed that dimension there as well. So it's quite good for that if you want to change the dimension. So look at some of the dimensions it's got. Um, 16.9, 0.2. So as you can see, that's really bad how that's looking. So if you took a picture on that, it wouldn't look good. Go back to the top one where it's got is megapixel. So that's how you change the resolution. When it comes to actually filming, your megapixels don't make any difference. Megapixels have no influence over quality of video. What makes a difference in quality of video is the actual the HD. And obviously the lens makes a huge difference. I can record on this and it's gonna look okay, but this is never going to match a really good camera. Um, don't get it wrong, it's a, it's a good webcam, um, but it's not going to match a really expensive camera. So here you've got the different resolutions. So I would always want to film in 1080p for myself, so that's good. But you've got all the other, ref there's a standard resolution there, 720p, so you could film in 720p. So you do have all the options, which is good for video resolution. But we put that back up to 1080p, 1920. Now I'm going to now show you some of the problems I had which has stopped me using this camera for my videos. So from here, if we go to video, now here again we've got this here which I wouldn't like. What I do like is you've now got this option here and if you click on this option it gives you as it may, this will obviously depend on your camera, but on this camera I'm using it does give you the option to zoom in. So I can zoom in and that's exactly what I'd want, not necessarily because I want to get closer, but because I wanted it to get rid of what was not showing, which is good. And then you've got these arrows here. These only work when you've zoomed in. So when you zoomed out, these arrows won't make any difference. But when you zoom in, obviously the lens is zoomed in, so then you can go, right, well, I actually want to go down a little bit like that, which is really good. Or I want to go up like that. I want to go to the side like that, but then obviously you see things you don't want to see. I want to go to this side and you can go as far as it goes that side. So that's really good for the filming and I do like that because it means you can get it spot on. So I normally put it about there so my head's not top, chopped off the top. Um, one thing that I will show you is, now I am obviously Recording this through a separate mic here, which I'll just touch. I'm sorry if that's a bit of loud noise, but I, I'm recording through this separate mic here, which isn't a fan, it's a good mic, but it's not fantastic. This is the mic I normally use, which is much better. Now, the reason why I'm not recording through this mic is I just wanted to show you something. So, previously, when you recorded on video, you'll see up here the only option you've got for the mic is to turn it off, that's it. And if I went to record, it would be using the Logitech 
uh, microphone, which is the built-in microphone, which is okay, but built-in microphone is never going to be a separate microphone. So the issue with that is with the microphone here, if you click on here, there, sorry, click on there, on your stand there, just click on that arrow there, and it will show you that the microphone that's being used is the HD Pro webcam, so it's using the built-in microphone. And that is obviously not good for what I would want to do. But the good news is it has been improved because before it wouldn't work. But now if I use this microphone and plug it into a mic jack on my Chromebox, that's why I'm not using that microphone on this video. So I had to do that. And then click on here. And now you'll see that it's actually using the mic jack. So that's really good. That's that's a great benefit because it means one, I can use this zoom in option here, so I can get it perfect how I want it. I can use this cam, this microphone if I wanted to. If I was filming, obviously I could film on here while showing you everything. It just isn't possible. Um, but that this is what I could do if I wanted to do it. Anyone else who wants to do videos could do it as well. Now the issue I've got is that there's no way of, apart from setting it to, put it on video, where's our settings? Apart from this here, there's no frames per second rating. So I can't say I want to record at 30 frames per second, or I want to record at 60 frames per second. It's a variable recording rate. Now, the issue with that is if I was just recording now in front of you like this, that's absolutely fine. But if I wanted to record and be showing you like this, but I also wanted to say record my, this is just recording the webcam. If I then wanted to record the desktop, I would have to use other software to record the desktop, which is what I'm doing. Now, the desktop is recording at, so I'll just bring up the camera again because you can't see what I'm saying. <laughs> it's quite strange. Okay, so the desktop is recording at 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second, but the camera is recording at a variable rate. Now, the issue you're going to have with that is the mic and the camera, where the webcam will be syncing at a variable rate, whereas your desktop will be set at 30 frames per second. And if you do any sort of video editing, you will know that a variable frame rate is an absolute no-no because it's just, it's no good. It's fine if the only thing you're recording is just one aspect and there's nothing else on part of, part of the video. But if you are adding other stuff, you need a fixed frame rate. So I was hoping it would be on here and it's not. And the strangest thing is, if you go to here, and I did some videos earlier to check, if you click on, right click on the video and press get info, it doesn't even show you that it's variable. It doesn't say whether there's 30 frames, 60 frames or variable. The only way I could find out, I'm sure there's, there, there will be limit software, but I, I didn't check. The only way I did it is I, I did a very small video and emailed it to my Windows PC and check the, the frame rate and it's variable. And then some videos come out at 29.9 and other videos come out at 28.33. So that's the reason why at the moment, that's what Google needs to do. If they want people to start using Chromebooks more professionally for video, um, that they need to sort that out because it's, it's impossible to do a video with other aspects if they don't sort out that frame rate. Now there is a flag and I, this is, I thought I'd try this flag today. And the flag is Chrome, hold on, forward slash, forward slash flags. And if you just put in there camera, you will see here, let me just find it. Um, here we go, so it's this top one here, it's enabled actually, so I enabled it to try, but it doesn't work for recording. So, prefer constant frame rate, and I thought fantastic, enables this flag to prefer using constant frame rate for camera when streaming. That was the problem for me, and I thought maybe it would still work, but it didn't. So, unfortunately, 
if you're streaming, then by all means try that flag. I don't know if it works because I, I haven't streamed and I don't I don't stream. Um, but if you are a, a, someone who streams videos, then try and see if it works. What I would like to see, if they can do for streaming, they need to also do it for recording because what, why wouldn't they? If you can do it for streaming, surely do it for recording as well. They should have an option up here where you can set on your camera resolution, very much like you get with your phone, here, 1080p, 1920, and another one, um, maybe VR for variable rate, and then another one with 30 frames per second, and another one if your camera can cope with it, 60 frames per second. And that would help a lot more people take more advantage of their webcams. And it could also mean that obviously you could record better quality videos on your webcam. It's good that it's here for streaming because hopefully what that will mean is if you do stream on Zoom and stuff like that for, for work, if, the, if that frame fixed frame rate works, then you won't get as much jaggedness. So you, you'll be it will be much better. So try it out if you do stream videos. It's good if you want to obviously do streaming, so I would definitely check that flag out if you stream to see if it works on 30 frames per second. It's just a real shame that they haven't done it for recording videos as well. Because as soon as they get to the stage where you can record at a fixed rate, 30 and also if you need 60 as well, um, if, if they did that, then that would be great because they've sorted out the mic issue where it's just using the webcam mic, which wasn't good, so you can use a uh, uh, an external mic, obviously I'm like this one, it would be that one there. Um, so I hope they do look at that because the, the more we get to a stage where you can do so much more on a Chromebook or a Chromebox compared to Windows PC, more people will move over and that is just one little thing they could do. So I hope this video helps. If it did, please like and subscribe to the channel for future videos and thanks for watching.